Hello, welcome back to my channel where I look at my solar journey, um, the science behind batteries, uh, solar panels and green technology and also uh, do some tuition for maths and physics to help children through their exams. So we're into August now and it's time to look back over July at my solar generation for my solar panels on the roof where I have 12 385 watt Q-cell panels which total 4.65 kilowatts feeding into a 5 kilowatt hour hybrid solace inverter which then powers the house but also gets some of it gets stored in a 5 kilowatt hour pure drive uh, battery. So July in Britain is meant to be a summer month but I think the only way to describe it is we're having a traditional British summer at the moment because compared, especially compared to June, where we had basically wall-to-wall -wall, uh, sun and bright days, in July it's pretty much been the opposite. Um, every day has been pretty much cloudy or, or raining, it's been windy. When I've been riding into work, it's been almost feeling autumnal. So what has the figures actually shown? So let's start off with the generation graph. So you can see what the graph looks like here. So you can see that we have had a fair amount of generation through July. It's actually been 505 kilowatt hours, which isn't too bad, considering later when I talk about our average uh, energy usage for the month. However, this is less than what we generated in April when we generated 512 kilowatt hours. Um, as you can see for the day, we only had one day, which was around the 6th, where we generated over 30 kilowatt hours. Back in June, there were basically a load of days where we were above 30 kilowatt hours. And as you can see, the minimum amount we generated, which was on the 13th, we only generated 3.2 kilowatt hours on that day. Um, and also, you can see there's some other times where we were under 4 to 5 kilowatt hour um, mark of electricity generation as well. But it's not just about the amount of energy electricity you generate, it's how you can use it, which is what the next graph shows. So as you, this is the usual graph. Um, the red is when we've had to import electricity from the grid. So you can see there's only three days where that's actually happened, which are the 14th, 15th and the 31st, and those happen to tally with days where there was not much generation um, from the sun. Uh, the yellow is from uh, energy we've generated on the roof, stored in the battery, and then ex uh, used for our home appliances. Green is what we call a self-use, which is basically real-time electricity use from the um, roof. And the blue is the export. You can see there's still a fair amount of export there as well. But if you look back at my previous video from last month, where we did June, you'll see um, the big differences there, where we actually generated well over 200 kilowatt hours more. I think it was about 250 kilowatt hours more actually in June than we did in July. So that's the general, what we're looking at in a graphical sense, but we want to know what that actually equates to in terms of money. So I am still on a British gas tariff, um, which um, charges us um, about 19, just over 19p per kilowatt hour for import. It has a standing charge of 23.5p or 23.5p per day, um, which I can't do anything about, so I'm not going to do this in any of the further numbers. Um, I also have a export tariff with So Energy, uh, which pays 5p per kilowatt hour for export. Yes, I know that low. There are some better deals um, if for providers that you don't have to have import with. Um, and I know that lots of people comment. Please actually comment below. I do enjoy reading the comments and find out what people are doing around the rest of the country. But I do get a number of comments saying, why don't I switch to Octopus? Um, it's because it doesn't seem to be financial sense at the moment for me to switch to Octopus with the current uh, high standing charges for both electricity and gas. I'm on dual fuel with British Gas and I fixed before the energy crisis back in 2021 and I'm fixed until March 2024. Um, and the exit fees for each fuel are quite high. So at the moment, it doesn't make entire sense for me to swap. So, but next March, that's when I probably will move on to Octopus and then move on to one of their um, sort of agile tariffs or smart tariffs 
um, then, or maybe the flux tariff. So let's um, just have a quick look at my energy usage for this month. As you can see, um, this month we've used um, 198 kilowatt hours in the house. Um, our, we've just basically used the electricity for, we have got an electric oven, but the hob is gas, our central heating is gas. And as you can see from this graph that 191 of those kilowatt hours that we've used in the house is um, for, uh, self generated by ourselves and 7.2 uh, kilowatt hours was imported from the grid which means that we were 96.7% uh, uh, self-reliant on our electricity in uh, July and we just have to import 3.23% of our electricity from the grid. So we can now start looking at numbers for this. As I say, we generated 505 kilowatt hours, which means that we sent back to the grid uh, 314 kilowatt hours. And at that 5p seg rate, that means that it it turned itself into £16.30. and pence. So that's a good £11 less than what we had last month from our SEG because we exported a lot more because we used roughly the same amount of electricity so that extra 250 kilowatt hours we exported went straight into our pockets uh, as money. Um, that 7.2 kilowatt hours that we had to import that cost us £1.29, so we're hardly breaking the bank on import of electricity this month. But again, that's um, the most we've had to spend, oh, well, we had to spend 3p more in May. But other than that, the last time we spent more than that, and when in May we spent £1.32. Um, in March we spent £6.25 on import, so it's been quite a few months since we've had to spend that amount on electricity. Um, compared to last month where we only paid 62p for import. And the savings, so this is money that we would have had to pay for British Gas if we didn't have, have solar panels, was £37.43, and p which is actually comparable to the previous two months, which were £38.68p and, and £39.88p, and but that's because we've got the same amount of usage, we haven't had that much import, so we expect those figures to be um, similar. So if we were to add the SEG to our um, uh, money saved, that would total £53.73. So you can take that off our, you can figure that as like a pay, um, payback payment. Um, so we're fairly happy with that, but looking at how good June was, it would have been nice if that happened again in July, but it seems that the death jet stream is currently sat under us, with, or under the UK, which means we're getting, um, as I say, quite autumnal weather. Um, but I suppose that's actually better than what the uh, mainland Europe was having when they had heat waves through out July. And looking at news reports from there, it's been the hottest July on record for the uh, Earth as a whole. So. Um, that's something just to bear in mind. Anyway, um, if you've liked this video, please subscribe, um, hit the notifications icon. Um, in this month, or in August, I'm going to be releasing a video about um, EVs. So I bought an EV a year ago, and I did a video last week where I look back at my year of owning that and the pros and cons of it. Um, I'm going to release another video next week, which are um, the myths of owning EVs and legitimate concerns. So breaking down sort of the claims you see in newspapers about EVs catching fire. Um, towards the end of the month, after the 24th, I've had my solar panels for a year, so I'm going to do a year roundup, and there'll be some other videos coming out as well. So I'll see you again very soon.